Alexander Vieira, is a BJJ black belt based out of Rio, that competes primarily in the featherweight division. If you keep up to date with the grappling community, Alexander is known for primarily three things. First, for bitch slapping Urbeth Santos when they met at an absolute match, at the Rio Fall Open earlier this year. Alexander says he was elbowed three times by Santos during the match and later apologized for his actions. Studying the video is inconclusive, and it appears that Santos was dropping his elbow down onto Alexander's face while inside control and perhaps also dropped a knee during a pass. The jury is still out there on those blows by Santos, but I can confirm though, that those were legit bitch slaps. Second, Alexander is the guy behind this submission that went viral. Despite all those views possibly coming from a clickbait title, like The Most Savage, Loop Choke, You Will Ever See, the seemingly impossible submission from bottom side control, along with a fireman's carry dump that follows, is truly a sight to behold. It's almost like watching a Mortal Kombat fatality, and a WWE finishing move, have a baby right before your eyes. This is why tape study is so important. Simple examination of the evidence would have shown his opponent, that perhaps it was a good day to call in sick, or pull something during warm-ups. Alexander has done this a few times before, and several opponents have gone out, from underestimating the headlock that Alexander gets from the bottom. Recently, on the ACB circuit, he managed a fireman's carry from the same unlikely bottom side control position, but without the gi this time. It just goes to show you, one day, Keenan might just worm guard someone without a gi. I'm not saying it's impossible, but as a wise man once said, look into it. Generally, clinging onto a headlock inside control, seems like suicide. However, because Alexander has such a tight chin strap on, and is actively trying to get his hips away so that he can turn to his knees, he is able to get reversals against his opponents. Now, if you're struggling with the third thing Alexander is known for, that's cause you haven't finished watching the video. Alexander is also a big user of a move you don't see on a regular basis, the crucifix. The crucifix is a pretty well explored topic, and there are several good instructionals out there, that you can check out for a comprehensive look at the position. Mastering the Crucifix, by Matt Kirtley and Marshall Carper, is an online instructional full of animated GIFs. I've actually done a review of this novel instructional a few years back, so do check that out on my website, if you're interested. In a nutshell, I thought it was pretty good. GambleDub, also has a massive Google Doc, that he is updating on the position, which will give you some very detailed insights as well. The links to these are in the description, and no I am not getting an affiliate fee or trying to collect your emails, what would I sell you anyway? Face masks? Anyway, those two links are in the description of the video. Do check them out. Ok. Moving on. Let's talk about Alexander's entries into the crucifix first. Lots of times, the moment the opponent exposes his back, Alexander looks for the crucifix. He doesn't try to immediately sink in hooks, like you see most of the time. On the feet, he can jump for the crucifix when you turn away and expose your back. If you turn away as you try to escape side control, Alexander will go for the crucifix. Another pretty standard entry for Alexander is off a stack. Here he gets double unders and tries to pass. The opponent actually makes it easy for Alexander, by hooking his leg with his arm. Alexander just has to tip him over, and roll for the crucifix, pulling the opponent along with the hook. A bit more effort here. This time the opponent doesn't hook Alexander's leg. Alexander has to keep stacking the opponent higher and higher until he flips over. Now in a turtle position, Alexander can go for the crucifix. Not all entries are so straightforward though. Here Alexander finds the crucifix during a scramble as the opponent tries to pass his guard. He cartwheels across the body and crucifixes when the opponent turtles. Alexander is a real opportunist and will go for the crucifix any chance he gets. For example, here he tries to slide under an opponent who is trying to play deep half. In the opponent's guard, he jumps for it when the opponent sits up and exposes his back. This is why Alexander has to be so good with the front headlock. The headlock position often presents itself from these failed crucifix attempts, and Alexander is prepared to re-counter you during crucifix scrambles, with either loop chokes, or fireman carries. The front headlock, is one of Alexander's better entry points for the crucifix. Here he keeps it on, all the way from defending a takedown, to a guillotine, and then to a snapdown, where he finally has an opening for a crucifix. 
Taking it further, Alexander will try to cradle you off the front headlock. Here you can see Alexander hooking the leg, and trying to roll the opponent, on their back for a pass. As the opponent turtles to defend, Alexander goes for the crucifix. Here Alexander tries a loop choke from a cradle. As the opponent defends, Alexander keeps holding on to the cradle. When the opponent tries to free his legs so that he can return to a turtle position, Alexander goes for the crucifix. Loop chokes, cradles and crucifixes are a deadly combo. Now, let's talk about finishes. Alexander can finish from the crucifix position, but he can also switch to two hooks in for the finish. Note the opponent's arm is still trapped by a hook when Alex makes the switch. Notice, Alexander actually briefly switches back to the crucifix position off the double hook position. What is really interesting though, is what happens when Alexander cannot swing across all the way for a double hook position. Here Alexander has no time or space to make the switch. Look at the configuration of his legs, as he holds the crucifix position. His left leg is hooking the arm. Instead of locking up the arm with his right leg though, Alexander has hooked it over the thigh, with a little grapevine. Why is he doing this though? Positioning your legs this way, still gives you a powerful finishing position, both from standing or on the ground. But this particular configuration also has several other advantages. With the conventional legs crossed position, the opponent's hips have freedom to swing and they might possibly break free. Look at how far the opponent can turn and bridge when you only control the arm and the crucifix. However, with the leg over their thigh, the opponent's hips are pinned. Now turning and bridging is not so easy. This time in Gi, Alexander again pins the opponent's hips by hooking down with his right leg, rather than crossing his legs around the arm like in a conventional crucifix. Now, you can see how Alexander's right foot is actually grapevining the opponent's left leg. This is preventing the opponent from kicking out and from planting his leg on the mat to bridge. The opponent is having a much harder time moving his hips, compared to the normal leg configuration around the arm. While this battle is being fought with the feet, Alexander is constantly attacking the choke with two hands, against a one-handed opponent. This is why Alexander is willing to take so many imperfect crucifix entries. Configuring his legs this way actually gives him a hook which he can use to pull the opponent with. Here the opponent has stepped over Alexander's leg. This seems like a good counter, as it stops Alexander from crossing his legs around the opponent's arm like in a conventional crucifix. Instead, now Alexander can roll in the other direction and pull the opponent to his back with his hook. Once on his back, Alexander again has the opponent's hips pinned. Or, he can cross around the arm like in a conventional crucifix. Again the opponent hooks the leg thinking it will save him. Instead, Alexander uses the hook to pull the opponent over, to further improve the position. This time, he pins the hip first with his right leg, without having the arm trapped. Notice, how Alexander is trying to pin the hip with his right leg, to prevent bridging as he consolidates position. Alexander now digs his left leg in, to trap the arm for the finish. Again, the legs were not crossed like in a conventional crucifix. Okay. Last one. The opponent again steps over the leg thinking this will stop the crucifix progression. Once again, he has trapped himself instead. Alexander rolls over and pulls him along. Once here, the opponent's arms are separated, and Alexander can start looking for the choke. The links between loop chokes, crucifixes, front headlocks, fireman carries and cradles is territory that needs to be further elaborated on. Do let me know in the comments, if you know any cool sequences involving these moves. Already, my patrons who have seen this study earlier, have had some interesting thoughts. Like Zach says, this different leg configuration makes finishing an arm lock with the legs much harder. But, he also points out that in this leg configuration, you are somewhat in a Merkel position, and you could possibly switch to a saddle next, for a leg lock sequence. See? Teamwork makes the dream work. Okay everyone. Hope that was useful. This is a new format I am experimenting with, so please do let me know your feedback and suggestions. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.